Welcome, welcome everyone to the Q&A session of Unlocking the Intelligence of the Afterlife. I'm here with Suzanne Geisman, who's going to be answering your questions. And where are you connecting from today, Suzanne? Hey everybody, I'm in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, way up north, so I can wear a sweater first thing in the morning in August. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's nice. Yeah. yeah, and I'm connecting from Lafayette, Colorado. We'd love to hear from all of you. You can go ahead and put it in the chat of where you're connecting from. Loveland, Colorado, wonderful, Jim. And we have our incredible, many thanks to our incredible tech team, Jim Gray and Garth. Welcome. Thank you for helping us with all the behind the scenes and the recording. And how today is going to work is we would love to hear from you. So we'd like to have you raise your hand if you have a question for Suzanne, and then we'll unmute you and then you can ask your question. So, and feel free if you don't want to ask your question live, feel free to put it in the chat and uh, we may get to it. All right. So hopefully we can get to everyone today. It's going to be about an hour. So we'll see how the day flows. Did you have anything that you, else you wanted to say, Suzanne, about? Well, just love that everybody's taking their time today to be with us. And it's a joy to answer your questions live. I love that you felt drawn to take the course. And I look forward to hearing what you're learning from it, how it's affecting you, how you like it, and answer any questions that it may have raised for you. So this is just awesome. Let's do it. Yeah, that's amazing. And that's a good point, Suzanne. We also would love to hear from you if you have any comments, any suggestions, anything you liked about the course, you know? Um, so all of that is welcome, welcome. So... We have people from Denmark, Norway, Missouri, Costa Rica, Oregon, California, Reston, Virginia, lots of people from Cali, Alabama, New Jersey, Lake Tahoe, Seattle. Welcome. Oh, Scotland. More from Oregon, Albuquerque, New Jersey. So wonderful. New Hampshire. All right, so we'll go ahead and get started. We have a couple people who have raised their hands. So I will go ahead and ask you to unmute. And Guranam, Kalsa, you're up. Good morning. Good morning. I love your earrings. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so this is kind of an auspicious day to me because today is the sixth anniversary since my husband of 34 years past. I've, I've just, you just taken me aback because earlier one of our helpers, Garth was said he had a wonderful evening and I immediately knew it was because he watched lightning storm. I knew you were about to say it was the anniversary of your husband's passing. So there's, I'm just a little bit shocked by the level of attunement this morning already. So sorry to interrupt you, but that is an auspicious day for you. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. There's a local medium psychic in uh, Northampton, Massachusetts, where I'm near at the moment. And I went to his uh, session a couple of weeks ago. He was so tuned in to some of the people. So I thought, I'm going to go again last night, asking my husband to you know, be present for messages to be transmitted. And, you know, it just was not on. I mean, he... I don't know whether his antenna wasn't polished or my husband's not available or he did pick up on, you know, one thing out of like a lot of things that the answer was no. Um, but yeah, my husband gave me like a foot massage like every day. So he was such a great guy. <laughs> anyway. Did the medium get that? Yeah, he did get something about, you know, foot massage. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, but the fact that, you know, we were both on a, a spiritual path for, you know, 40 years together. Um, I just thought our communication across the veil was going to be right there. Well, and you had witnessed this medium work in the past and had good things? Yeah. 
one other time and it was he was recommended to me by somebody else who had kind of an auspicious result with him this so is the, the thing about mediumship and i love that all these questions pertain to all of us it's like mediumship is like the connection is like a cell phone signal it comes and goes sometimes it's one bar sometimes it's five bars sometimes it's no signal and it doesn't have to do with how much our loved ones want to talk to us it could there there are so many variables even the 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 cycles of the planets and the moon and the weather affect mediums so I love that you know that the medium was good because that's really important. Not all mediums have a good connection and that has nothing to do with how much our loved ones want to connect with us. But we all, we mediums all have our off days. So it could be the medium, but it also could just be atmospheric conditions. And it could be that somebody else needed more of the medium's energy for a more clear connection for them. So it's really important to know that it's not always a strong signal and we don't always know why so not to place blame anywhere just say hmm at least I got that foot massage thing and that's all you really wanted was validation your husband's around so that one time did that for you yeah okay that was part of my question was my husband potentially not around and available and that's why he picked up so little not about, especially not when it's near a special date like the angel bursary as we call it oh and that's a nice word thank you yeah. <laughs> yeah he keeps snagging me with i'm snagged repeated by that tree that's painted on the wall behind you there's something about that trees or the tree being very special to your husband you may even have something like a special memorial under a tree or by a tree. There's something with the tree that I'm tuning into that's significant with the two of you and especially with him. So just share that with you. Well, I'm in a, I'm in a friend's home, so this isn't- It doesn't matter if it's not yours. I'm being, you, if you've taken the course, you understand about snags. So I will be thinking about why is it that I'm being snagged by that tree with you? What's so special about the trees and the oneness with the two of you? like aspen trees, you know, they share the same root system. So just think on that because that's really getting me. Okay. Okay. All, All right. right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Garanam. I'll go ahead and mute you now. So Sandra, I'm going to ask you to unmute. And you can go ahead and come up and Garth is going to bring you up. Here you are, Sandra, welcome. Go ahead and ask your question to Suzanne. Hi, Suzanne, I'm really loving your course. Oh, I'm, I'm benefiting much from it. Um, when I was doing the chakra cleansing and bringing the um, earth energy and then the, the upper energy in and then starting from the base chakra up, um, that day I was tired, I'd already studied a lot. And I really wanted to do that exercise and I was focusing so much and then I fell asleep. And I came to right at the end, hearing your voice at the end and we got right up the body. And what I discovered was that I had had a real tightness in my chest. It was um, probably from chest infection, but also it was emotional. And when I finished, it had released. And so what I noticed there was that although I thought I had to focus my own intention, it was still happening, I think, correct yeah. me if I'm wrong, at the subliminal level. Absolutely. Yeah, that you, you, I have fallen asleep to my own 10 minute transformation meditation and it still works. It, uh, it, it keeps working because your intention is there and the, it's still getting through to your energy field. I got the goosebumps from that. So I love that you had that physical proof of that. It, Thank you. And sitting in peace, I found that, um, I found that really powerful too. Um, what I found was I didn't get a really strong message, but I was in floods of tears and it was my heart was opening. Ooh. I felt my dad around me and um, just a, a sense of being loved. What more could we ask for? Gosh. Yeah. Yeah. You've given me an opportunity to share a technique with everybody. If you find your mind wandering when you're doing a chakra clearing exercise, one thing that I do, I hope you were familiar with my 10 minute transformation recording. It's free on the gifts page on my website. It may have been part of the course. Either way, go find that. 
And as the, you go through the seven chakras, I do two things to help me focus because it's a practice to focus, a wonderful practice. I use my hands and I, I move them like this in front of each of the chakras as we go through them like this. You know, we're going behind as well. I move my hands and then I also repeat back the words of the recording as they go. So move your awareness to the throat chakra. And then I'll say, move your awareness to the throat chakra and picture it. And, I, and so repeating the words keeps you focused. There's a practice in presence and using the hands also keeps you from falling asleep. And it's just a really good kinesthetic visual reminder of what we're doing in this practice, opening our chakras. Okay. Thank you. I'm so grateful for your teaching. Oh, I love that it helps you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Sandra, for sharing that. And I, I really appreciate that exercise and wonderful to be able to go deeper in our own transformation. So I'm definitely going to do that after this Q&A. So let's bring the next person up. So I'm going to mute you, Sandra. And then Paula, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Welcome. Go ahead and ask your question to Suzanne. I'm Suzanne. Uh, um, I don't really have a question, but I do have a comment, and it's a good one. I want to tell you how much I love you introducing me to the idea of the single-eyed awareness. I have never used that terminology before, but it reminded me of uh, Joel Goldsmith's um, advice to us to try to see as God sees. Is this kind of along the same lines? Oh, absolutely. I love Joe Goldsmith's work. And uh, he had some beautiful, beautiful connections with, across the veil as a result of reading his work. The energy is beautiful. But single-eyed awareness is, just goes back to, you know, if your eye is single, your entire being will be filled with light, you know, and this is true. And the greatest truth we can come to, what, what are we talking about? Single-eyed awareness that I'm talking to you now, you're talking to me, I can see Carissa, I can see several of you on my screen at once. And yet there's that dual awareness at the same time, even though I'm looking at what appear to be separate beings and I may feel separate here, there's such an awareness from that single light awareness that it's all just the one. Refracted, however you want to say it, just dividing itself, our self, into us for this experience of the relationship, the enjoyment. We get to enjoy this time together because we, as the one, said, let's have relationship. That's in itself single eyed awareness, holding in awareness. We are the one and the many at the same time. Isn't that a blessing? So I'm glad that spoke to you. It really did. It really did. And um, it, it, when you said relationship, I immediately thought of my dear sweet husband, um, who was a unity minister. And he always said, I bet he said it every day. It's all about relationship. There you go. <laughs> and there it came out today. It, and and I'm, I don't usually bring through things from spirit on the spot, but I just feel so connected right now. There's something about your husband. He's punching down a bed pillow. He's fluffing it up and just trying to get it just right. Uh, it feels like a double meaning that either one of the two of you could never quite get that pillow just right when you slept, but also it's you. But he also is doing it for you at night to let you know he's there with you when you're sleeping. Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. Thank you. And thank you, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Beautiful. I'll be speaking at the Unity Church in uh, Lawrenceville, Kansas in September. And I haven't done a Sunday service for a Unity in years. And I get to do the message and the meditation. So I'm looking forward to that. <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Thank you so much for sharing and facilitating bringing in your husband, Larry. That was beautiful. So I am. Uh, thank you for joining us today, Paula. I'm going to mute you now, Joelle. I'm going to ask you to unmute. There you are. Okay, and go ahead. So, You're on. Um, I, I, I yes, I'm watching you from France. That's what France, where it's quite hot and nice. 
Um, I knew you were going to say France before you said it. This is great, guys. This is the goal, right? To just tune in. Holy mackerel. What? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I just wanted to share something about the experience after you uh, led us into the bless me method. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that I have quite a bit of work to do with my deceased companion. Um, and so I wanted to check with you whether that is right, whether there is some issues with a deceased person that must be worked uh, even when we're separated from one is still alive and the other is on the other side of the veil. And uh, so I, I felt that quite strongly, but I never quite know for sure whether it is my mind or whether it is really coming from soul. Um, and so if that is true, that there's some work to be doing, I, I have to be mindful of that. Mm. Well, it's a beautiful question. And this is one of the tasks of a medium is to continue the conversation because those across the veil do want to continue it because as we said in the previous discussion, it's all about relationship. So why continue the story as a soul across the veil if not to continue learning through relationships? So what comes through mostly in readings is those across the veil, once they are surrounded by love and feel that love is really all that matters and know that we are souls here to express our love, we know there's so much more than when we're in a body because we're just focused on the human drama. They feel it's not really an urgency, but a nudge to just express more their love, to express apologies, to ask for forgiveness. But it's not a... Uh, it's not like a human, oh my God, I have to do this or else type of feeling. So if they feel that you, and they would be aware of anything that you feel is left undone, they will want to be around to help you clear that out as well. So absolutely continue working. I feel that your partner did, wants to let you know that they didn't say, express their love enough, didn't say it often enough. There was a, a time when you just kind of both... Uh, we're in your own spaces. Like I see it like a turning of the backs. Not that you turned your back on each other, but it's more of uh, it, if they had realized that the relationship was as important as it is, it would have been more verbalized. So um, by all means, understand now that you can say anything you want and they hear it. You don't even have to say it. It's, it's kind of rattling to some people to learn that they hear our very thoughts. So there are no secrets once they cross the veil. So just get it out, have a nice talk with them, use the bless me method to do that and you'll feel more of a connection, but the relationship is ongoing. Thank you, Suzanne. You're, You're very precious to me. Thank you. Mm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what a blessing. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Joelle. I'm going to mute you. And next we have Kimberly. Kimberly, you are already ready to go. I love yes. it. Yes, okay. I am. Um, I'm loving the course. Thank you very much. It's wonderful to be here. Um, I'm in Georgia. I do live in Australia. I've been living there for 30 years and I'm on a family visit. Oh, wow. Um, I don't get to come very often. And so um, it's been Where a relief to me. That Hobart's, what is that big mountain, the Mesa in Australia? Uh, why would that have just popped into my mind? Is it Hobart Mountain? Or um, Uluru, Ayers yeah. Rock, yeah. used to be called Ayers Rock, now Uluru. Are you anywhere near that? Or why would that suddenly pop into my mind? Of all no, things in Australia. I've never been, and maybe I'm meant to go. So. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me know how that goes. Um, so it's been a great relief to me because I don't get to visit uh, my family very often that the teachings that everything will be okay once we're on the other side, yeah. um, to take the pressure off me um, worrying about my own like, like health or my own death or my, my mother said a lot of health problems here. So I'm, I'm here to, to visit her, but also I have an opportunity to um, stay in the house where my father died with his sister, my aunt. Mm -hmm. And I'm very excited about the possibility of maybe having some more direct communication with my father. Um, yeah. 
you will definitely the, feel the energy more, but you may not be aware that that's what's happening. I went, I was furniture shopping yesterday and we went in some consignment stores. And the more we got into the back of the store where the older furniture was from older people, I was just overcome with the feeling of the energy of the people who owned those things. So it's very real that, that houses and furniture still carry the energy of the people who use them and, and live in houses where they live. So you will feel the patterns that are there and that will hold you closer to your father. It doesn't necessarily mean he's focused on you now, but use the, the tools you're learning to sit in that energy and ask him to talk with you. Okay. And also there's a certain amount of human drama going on with my family that's still on this side that has um, been challenging. And I just wondered any... <laughs> tips or advice big advice for that um i just talked with a friend yesterday who was telling me about some really truly sleeping awake and wise sleeping neighbors she has who are, say horrible things and lots of drama and the best thing we can do two things is remember the balcony in the theater analogy sit in the balcony and watch that family drama don't get so caught up in the role on the stage that you get sucked into it. That distance by sitting in the balcony is so helpful. Maintain that. It's that same thing we were talking about, single-eyed awareness. I can be aware that I'm one of many and the one at the same time. I can be aware, you can be aware that you're playing the role as the daughter and the sibling, but at the same time say, and we're all sitting together as souls on the balcony watching this. And that's when we say, pass the popcorn, right? Because this is getting really interesting, you know? And when you say pass, pass the popcorn is my phrase that my assistants and I use all the time. And it just takes it, it makes us laugh at ourselves, even though the drama can get very serious. The second part, and this is all of this applies to everybody. So I love that everybody's participating is that we, we do fall into roles and the quickest way to stay out let me say this a different way. Let me tune in here. So, okay. Re maintain an open heart, be the presence of love, which you as a soul are. And anything that anybody says that's old energy will just flow through you. When you're open, when you are in this state of open heartedness, there's nothing for anybody else's energy to push back against. So, things that might normally trigger arguments or tension just dissolve as their energy flows through your openness so when you feel you want to get defensive and defend something you're defending a role do you really mm. need to do that just be the soul send love and let people play their roles if they're not aware who they are you just let them be right let them say their thing because ultimately it doesn't matter. It's all about love and you will leave and you'll say, wow, the whole dynamic changed because I didn't have to defend my role. It's mm. just amazing how things change. Wow. So have an amazing rest of the visit. Oh, thank you. That's really helpful. Thank you very much. All right. You're welcome. <laughs> okay, Kimberly, make sure you have your popcorn. Okay, <laughs> you go. I love it. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That was amazing. So Suzanne, I had a couple questions from the chat, but I was just curious if you're doing readings because Ruthann is asking if there's a message across the veil, but I'm not sure. Are, are you, you in this session? Yeah. Right now they're asking in we the chat. Those, we call those drive-by readings. It's not, you know, when I do a reading, we sit and we get, we do it's the blessing. Deep. I do the bless me method beforehand. And we yes. really tune in that when I'm just dropping little things that I'm sensing, that's not even a reading. That's just honoring the moment what's here. But uh, yeah, I really like to honor those in spirit by doing full on reading. Yeah, that's that's what I intuitively thought. But I did want to mention it, you know, just to honor those in the chat. So anyone who would like a reading, please reach out to her. No. No, 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 don't do that. Oh my gosh. Okay. Like so word, sorry. No, but let me tell you what's going on with readings. I've been working okay. my five-year rating list for six years. Five years. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and I have, we're, if I haven't done a reading in weeks now because of my life, just 
being what it is. So I'm I'm having a hard time even doing the readings of the people on the list. So oh, um, okay. I haven't added to my waiting list in quite a while. So. Okay. So what oh, thank you. Expectations for. Yes. Thank you for correcting me. Possible. <laughs> thank you for correcting me. Okay. Yes, Sorry to put you on the spot like that. Okay. Wonderful. Okay. So um, Alex has a question. Do you have a recommendation for which course or practice is best to significantly improve my mediumship skills? Oh, wow. I am going to be introducing a new class for soul to soul communication with the shift network that starts in December. That'll be live. That same course, we have several courses with the shift network and I have several courses on my website. They're all described under courses, mediumship. You just look at the descriptions and see what speaks to your heart. I don't, I, I'll be doing them a course live in person, probably not till February, but yeah, that's the best. The best Wonderful. Time. And I'll just say from my own experience is practice. Keep practicing is, yeah, along with, you know, Suzanne's guidance and her classes. So wonderful. So now I'm going to bring Linny. Linny up. I'm going to ask you to unmute. So go ahead and come on stage. You're on with Suzanne. Welcome. Oh, Hi. nice backdrop. That looks like North Carolina to me. It's actually West Cliff, Colorado. Oh, okay. <laughs> Gorgeous. Yes, it is. Um, thank you. Yeah, um, I had the most amazing experience after taking your course, and I continued it. I mean, it's it's not it's not a take a course and and then go. It's like I can constantly tap back into it. And um, but I I saw these in in our driveway cameras because we we have thirty five acres and it's a long driveway, and going down and and in the camera on the driveway, saw these four orbs. I was just, I, there was like, there was an alert and I looked, usually it's a deer or bear or something. And, um, and there were like these four orbs and they were, they were in dancing synchronistically like together. Okay. And, um, and then they shot off the camera. And cause I was asking for my guide to show as do your, it's like, show me, you know, that, <laughs> that you're real, that you're with me and, um, and that I'm on the right path. And, and so it came, they came on together and then they shot off and I was like, oh crap. And, <laughs> and, um, and I told my hubby, did you see him? Cause he had looked at the camera as well from his device. And he said, I don't see anything. And, and then they came back. I was like, you're supposed to let me see you like really see you. And they came back like, and they just danced in front of, and I said, I said, are you looking? Do you see them? And he, and he was looking, he said, I don't see anything. Oh, I love that. <laughs> And, and they were stayed there for quite a while. And I actually recorded it. Oh, that's and so the re that's awesome. It was like, you're supposed to let me record you. <laughs> wow, and, that's beautiful. Yeah, it, it really was. And so what was that, that he, one that he couldn't see. And um, after, I mean, it was clear as day. Like I don't, I've never had any experience where it was that. Well, I've had two experiences, but one before your, your course mm -hmm. and um, why you couldn't see them. And then, what I guess I, I didn't I just got so excited I didn't really know like orbs and all that kind of stuff like <laughs> just so, didn't first of all let me just share that I had a young boy that I brought through in a reading who came through in his parents camera a video security camera like that an orb going around and around bouncing in front of their chest making a heart shape like this in front of their chest and just so clearly playing with them. It covers me with goosebumps. So why did your husband see it and you not? And why did he not see it and you saw it? Do I talk about sensations, thoughts, and feelings arising in awareness in this humanity team course? Do you recognize that? I talk about the stuff that arises in awareness. Um, maybe, but... Everybody, I, I can see a bunch of you. Nod your head if, or, or shake your head if, you, if I don't talk about the stuff. I don't remember that, me. Okay, so when we really look at what's going on here in consciousness, all that's happening is experiences within the mind. The world appears to be solid, but all that everything breaks down to is sensations, thoughts, and feelings that arise in awareness. This 
computer screen you're looking at may appear solid. It's a sensation arising in awareness of what we label a computer. You had an experience and awareness of the sensation of orbs. That's a sensation is a visual, right? Your husband didn't. If your energetic field was manipulated in such a way by the guides that you perceived the sensation of their presence. This truly is like a virtual reality, what we're living in. Through meditation, we take off the headset and we experience another reality. Your guides were able to manipulate your reality. We all have a shared reality, but within the shared reality, we're already having our own experiences in consciousness. They were able to manipulate your sensations of your reality in a way that it was not shared with your husband while it was overlaid on the shared reality of your driveway. <laughs> wow. And, and they allowed me to record it. So now anybody can see it. Isn't that cool? <laughs> they yeah. get to see my reality. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's exactly. really cool. There Thank you, go. you for that. I, yeah. I was like, how could that possibly? Ha I mean, I know how I, everything's possible, but I just, it was like, just an opportunity. Thank you for that. I cool. really You're welcome. I thought that was so perfectly explained. I appreciate that. You know, it's something that we I always wonder too. And it was so clear. Well, if you read my book, Wolf's Message, you'll see how I had the experience of being drawn to go to the Barnes and Noble store. There's a book there for you. So I went to the metaphysical section. I'm staring at the bookshelf. And the one book I was supposed to read, because it had the answer to a question I had asked, a phenomenal answer, moved on the shelf. It went, shh. It moved. A half oh, half. wow. Back. I heard the sound of it moving. And I was like, what was that? And then it did it again. And I knew if anybody had been standing beside me, they would not have seen the book move. So spirit manipulated my sensations, my experience. Mm. It was absolutely real. And then I bought the book because how are you going to ignore that? I had one other experience where I was standing in a, in a hotel lobby, checking out what I was going to have for breakfast in the morning behind the Starbucks closed gate there. And this woman walked by, she said, oh, I'm in your class tomorrow. And we chatted a little. She walked off and to my left, a package of brown sugar and maple oatmeal in a basket on the shelf, slid down in the basket and slid back up. I said, oh my God. And then I felt giggling. And I knew it was a loved one of the woman who had just walked past. Couldn't sense who she was, didn't know anything about her, but I knew she had made that oatmeal move. The next day I asked the, the student, what's with your, your loved one and oatmeal? And it was her mother. She went, oh. now who gasps about oatmeal, right? So we knew this is a big thing. So I said, what's with the oatmeal? She gasped so loudly, everybody turned around. She said, my mother ate brown sugar and maple oatmeal seven days a night, a night. Not oh. just, it was huge. And, and why I didn't sense her mom, who it was, was her mom loved to be the center of attraction. So we bring it up in front of the whole class and mom is now the star, you know? And so if anybody had been standing beside me, would they have seen the oatmeal move? It was so real. I feel like they would have, but I don't know. It was a manipulation of my energetic field, my virtual reality, which we call reality, but this world is not as solid as it seems. And when spirit needs to get a message through to us, they can pull that off. Isn't that great? That's so amazing. And, you know, maple oatmeal is really important to me too. <laughs> So I eat oatmeal every day. And then my daughter, her favorite is actually maple brown sugar. She refuses to have anything else. So there's a synchronicity too. Well, when that, the, the same woman whose mom came through, her daughter's pregnant. Just recently, she wrote to me, update from my mom. Uh, my daughter was saying, grandma, are you watching over my baby? And the woman is so pregnant, she didn't want to go out shopping. So she had her groceries delivered from Target to her home. In her order was a box of maple sugar oatmeal and she never eats it, would never have ordered it. And it just happened to end up in her box. <laughs> oh, so that was a message from spirit. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Lenny. Thanks, we're, we're going to bring Georgia up on stage here with us.
You ready, Georgia? I'm, oh, I'm ready. Yes. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Go ahead and ask your question. Okay. Thank you so much. At first, I'd like to say, Suzanne, I've read several of your books and taken your classes, and I just am so grateful for your work. Um, my question is, um, the father of my children passed away three weeks ago. Oh, my. And they're grown children. And um, my grandchildren, two of them, are having a bit of a problem. So I just wanted to see if you had any recommendations of how to explain death to a five-year-old and a seven-year-old um, in a but way that would be that they Trust that they know more than you feel. They're still mm -hmm. aware of who they are as little souls that, that are not so conditioned in the human way. And you can have a heartfelt discussion with them and say, you may remember before you even came here, you were just this beautiful light. And that's where grandpa, that's how grandpa is now, just like the same beautiful light, but always around you, always around you. And you can talk to him and maybe you'll even see him you can encourage that and you may be surprised you may get messages through them and mm -hmm. it's very normal for them to have a challenge with this but if you can let them know that yeah he's not here physically but he's still around us and it's really exciting that we can still talk to him and he'll hear us get excited about that honor their grief we should mm -hmm. all be able to feel that grief you know there's no wonder we have a problem but at the same time get them started young not being afraid of this say we're sad. Don't, you know, don't worry about us that we're sad. You know, mm -hmm. this is normal because we love him so much. But at the same time, because we love him so much, we can still celebrate him and know that he's still around us. Let's talk to him right now. You know, that kind of thing. Right. Okay. Yeah. He's, uh, he, if his mom goes out of the room for a little while, my youngest, um, he just gets almost hysterical and she kind of feels like he may be worried that she's died you know so. yes oh that's very anyway. yeah there's a yeah. book by K dr karen herrick i i remember reading it years ago but it's not that old h-e-r-r-i-c-k and she wrote it for grandchildren and it's i think the word soul is in the top in the title so if you go to uh, amazon look for a children's book by karen herrick and see if it speaks to you perfect thank you so much that's wonderful okay Thank you for sharing, Georgia. I just appreciate your Thank groundedness you. and presence in everything that's happened. You're you're bringing so much Thank peace you. to your family. Yes. Thank you. So Very I'm, nice. I'm going to mute you. Okay. Well, I'd like to invite Martha to come up on stage. And there you go. All right. Go ahead and ask your question to Suzanne. Hi, Martha. There we go. Same kind of message as the previous person. I've read most of your books. I've attended a lot of your classes. And I'm just so grateful for all you're doing for so many people. Thank um, so thank you. And my question is, uh, I have had trouble connecting with my guides. And I've been told the name of the guides. I try to talk to the guides. I talk to my husband. Um, but I don't feel like I'm really connecting with my guides and I want to better connect with my husband. What, what's going on with me or what is, what do you think might be? There's absolutely nothing wrong with you. Just <laughs> understand that guides may not be communicating with you in the way that you're expecting. Don't necessarily expect your guides to talk to you and have full conversations. One of the reasons we don't sense our guides is because they are so much a part of our field that we don't recognize it like the hair on your head i can't feel my hair right now i can see it but i can't feel it till you know the wind blows then i'm aware of my hair on my head your guides have always been with you they're always in your field so you're just not aware of it this beautiful exercise i it should be in the course if it's not just do the bless me method and when you get to the merge part ask your guides one at a time to step out of your energy field physically they don't literally step out they deactivate the connection right turn down their light a little bit and see what difference you feel do you feel a coldness and emptiness maybe it feels warmer it'll be different for every person 
but suddenly without them being a part of your, your being present with you, a part of your energy field, there is a difference. So that's one exercise just to recognize, my gosh, no wonder I don't know because you're as close as the hair on my head. Why don't I feel you? And as far as how they're communicating with you, they are guiding you all the time, whether you hear them or not. So just give them thanks and say, how about just some more signs? I'd like to know just to trust your presence more. Snag me with more signs that you're around. And use other methods to notice that you are being guided. Okay. I've done the car wash message because I was hoping that might help. You mean the chakra clearing? Yes. Yeah. Well, chakra clearing is good for daily maintenance of our energy field. But again, expectations of how they'll show up can stand in your way. Trust me, they when you reach out to them and want to know they're there, they are doing their best. So just trust that they're here. The sip of the divine is just a wonderful way to talk to them every day. Briefly. I do that too. Yeah. So honor how they're showing up in different ways. And you can even say, show me. You just say, what sign are you going to give me today that you're still around? What sign are you going to give me? Whatever pops into your mind, that's your thing. I got, I did that this morning and typed immediately down. My sign for the end, my sign for the question I just asked is going to be this. I just documented it in an email to myself so that when I get it, we'll celebrate it even more. So just be playful with them instead of what's wrong with me that I'm not sensing them yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you, Martha, for joining us. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. So next we have Amber. Amber, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Wonderful. Welcome. Go ahead and ask your question. I'm so excited to be on here. I really didn't expect to. Um, hi, Suzanne. Um, I'm a big fan. I've taken, uh, amongst some of the other people that have been on here before, I've taken a couple of year shift courses and um, I listen to your messages of Hope podcasts almost every day. Oh, wow. Um, there's a yeah. lot in my, they, they load really easily on my Spotify. So they're just right there. And it's always Good. wonderful because Good. spirit guides me to who, who I need to listen to when you're doing an interview or something, because they're just right there in the queue. And oh, it doesn't, wow. have, doesn't have anything to do with the chronological order or the date or anything. It's just whatever pops up that day is what I'm supposed to listen to. Let me so, interrupt for you just a second, because that's a perfect answer for the previous question. You know, honor that your guides are putting the right one in there. That's communication from your guides. The, as simple as things falling into place is orchestrated by the guides. You don't necessarily have to hear your guides say, I did that. So, okay, back to your question. No worries. One other thing I had to mention was, is I'm, I'm in Alaska and I was so envious of your beautiful cruise that you went on. I've done that trip several times in a smaller oh. boat. Uh, we're mariners, but um, anyway, I just wanted to say that I hope you do that again, because I would love to go on a, on a, a journey like that with you. And it doesn't have to be Alaska. But well, let I me tell you all that we just finished that Alaska cruise. And this is why I'm not doing readings. I'm still catching up. I only got back less than a week ago. It was off the charts, surreal, the energy, the love. Huh, I have a picture over here on the wall of all these people just that we just, it was phenomenal. And we announced in the cruise that next year we're doing a Mediterranean cruise. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> yeah, it, we'll be announcing it as soon as the website is up for that. But just save the date, September 19th to 29th, 10 days in the Mediterranean. I know everybody can't afford it and I'm sorry, but um, lots of whatever. You know, we just have to trust that everything unfolds perfectly for whoever. Okay. Sounds good. Well, thank you for that. Um, again, I, I, I've i always wanted to ask this question. Um, like I said, I've been in your uh, courses for a while. I haven't... Um, I've made some great gains and you have some wonderful things out there. Uh, one of the questions I have is kind of come to mind and it's been listening to your podcast actually is um, I have um, lost a, a stepsister. It's been a long time. It was 93. She was a pilot and um, she was flying when she passed. And um, shortly after um, she passed, I lost a very precious um, once in a lifetime beloved dog. He was a 220 pound Mastiff. And, um, he passed um, unexpectedly at five years old. So there was two abrupt losses of very dear family members. 
Um, my sister obviously was an adult, she didn't live with me, but um, shortly after that, she came to me often in dreams and so did the dog. The dog was with her and they were so real. They were so alive. They were, I would wake up and like, oh, they're, they're still here. That whole thing of them passing was, that was a dream. I mean, that's how real they felt. Right. And um, for years it was that way. And I know she was probably went into her life review, but then I haven't had those visuals and those dreams for several years now. And I wondered what's the difference? Did something transition with her? Um, the, in spirit that changed because she quit coming to me in my dreams. Yeah. And so that's, I tune into my team to ask this question. What I'm hearing is that the dreams are just no longer necessary when that energy is so strong and we're still in the throes of the early grief, the, the dream visits, which is what they are, when they're that solid and you remember them, are a part of the healing process across both sides of the veil just to let you know you'll never forget and you haven't forgotten that you had that experience and you knew they were with you. And now you just have a new way, a new relationship of, it, it may not feel like a relationship because you're not interacting, but it's just not as necessary. So it's not that they're not around anymore. I could do a reading and they would be right here because they will always be around. This is such an important point, always comes up. Even if the soul has reincarnated to another experience, the role that soul played as your stepsister and as the soul of the dog will always be available to you as long as you're in relationship. So it's just that the way you relate it has changed. You have friends that come and go, but you always know each other. You may not visit each other as often here. And yet, at the drop of a hat, if you say after 20 years, hey, let's get together, you can have a reunion. So it's just a different way of relating and not indicative of them having moved on or not being around anymore. Okay, thank you. That's funny that you mentioned that because that dog after 20 years did reincarnate and he's here right behind me right now. If he's oh. now two years old, but um, yeah, he was a rescue at eight months old I, or eight weeks old. I was able to hit, get him and his sister um, and it was preordained, but I, I have a knowing that he's for sure. So it, that's why it's kind of like, I think about him reincarnating and I appreciate that, that yes, I know he, he decided to join me again, but uh, I've always had that kind of question. Thank yeah, you. He for would the, still be greeted the, by the Mastiff across the veil. Yes. See? Cause that's yeah. the same, if it's the same soul, but it's not all or nothing. We're playing roles that are fluid. Yes. Yeah. All right, thank you. Great, right, you're welcome. Thank you, Amber, for joining us. I I'm so happy that you asked that question about pets and the way you answered it, Suzanne, because you can be the soul can be in multiple places, right? Absolutely. In heaven and reincarnated. That's incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was um, yeah, I always wondered about that. It's well, there's very a book called Soul Survivor. There's actually two books with the same title. One's about a, a Navy SEAL in Afghanistan. That's S-O-L-E. But S-O-U-L Survivor is about a young boy who knew he was the reincarnation of a World War II Navy pilot who crashed and was killed in an airplane crash in World War II. And in that book, the evidence that he was this pilot is irrefutable. And he visits that pilot's sister, who's now in her 80s. And I knew that even though he was the sister's reincarnation of her son, her brother, mm. I hope you're following me, it's confusing. <laughs> I knew that if oh, I absolutely. sat with that sister in her 80s, I would be able to connect very clearly with her brother, even though he's now this little boy having an incarnation here, because the soul is so much more than one lifetime. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much. And um, yeah, I also wanted to say I grew up in Alaska and in, in Sitka and oh, we yeah, stopped there. Fair, yeah, it's a popular place for cruises. And I was a mariner. We fished for all of our food. So I, I really connect with and you just got back from Alaska, Suzanne. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Oh, yeah. So my friend from Sitka just visited me. Well, um, thank you for joining us here, Amber 
on stage. We have time for more questions. I'll go into some of the comments um, here in the chat. Karen has a question about the Mediterranean cruise. Now that might be a new thing. I don't know if you have more information about that. <laughs> But just that, like again, 10 days starts in Barcelona, goes to Cannes, France, Florence, Rome, Messina, Italy, Malta, Rhodes, Greece, uh, Santorini, Greece, Ephesus, Turkey, and ends up in Athens. 14 hours of workshops with me. So it's going to be about the Awakened Way teachings again. Uh, just the most amazing sense of community. So you, it's still too early to register, but if you're on my email list, you will hear as soon as we announce it. So just go to my website, to the homepage, scroll down and a pop-up will come up where you can sign up for my email list to be notified about that. Okay, well, wonderful. That's great. That, that'll be so amazing. All right, Amber. So now I'm going to have Rosemary Come on up. I'm going to ask you to unmute and go ahead. Welcome. Welcome. Go ahead and ask your question. Good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, mine's in the same venue vein as um, the last person about being able to sense or feel your guides or feel the information. Um, typically, I don't feel anything overwhelming. Sometimes I do. I don't either. Okay. I tell you, it's so subtle and you, you just kind of get in a, a role of nudges and insights and understanding your thoughts are not all your own. It's a shared field of experience. So they can put thoughts in your head that's, that feel like your own when your guides know what's best for you and give you a thought. I think I'll go take my car to the mechanic today and you find out it's a good thing you came in. Where did that thought come from? That was your guides. <laughs> That happened the other day because I looked at my my uh, oil gauge and it was like zero. <laughs> Why do you think that example just came up? You know, it's just, this is the way life works when you just say what immediately comes up, act on what comes up. Yeah, very cool. So is there more a deeper aspect of your question or different? Well, yeah, in a similar in term, like you said, it's subtle sometimes. And I guess for me, I, I like to know definitively yay or nay um like um you mean are you here listening listening to guys and having them um guide me because it seems to me if you're doing something sometimes um there's a there's, it's if it's meant to be sometimes it's easier to get oh. It's easy yeah. and this sometimes is it's difficult. And I had this experience when I was looking for an Ayurveda doctor and things kept coming up and coming up and coming up. So finally, I just said, you know, I don't want to see this, this doctor because things just kept coming up, but I wanted something, I, I guess, more definitive about to pursue this doctor or not to pursue the doctor. That, that's all, something stronger. The, the phrase that always helps is when you're hitting a wall, you're not paying attention to, so, to, oh. to guidance, inner guidance. If things just don't keep going right, we're trying to do it our way. And so when things are really flowing and falling into place, that's when you're just, even you may not realize that you're, you're flowing, you're, you're following the thoughts. So you know, if you think it's supposed to be this particular doctor, but it's not working out, just stop and say, hmm, why is that not working out? We were trying to go to buy a boat one time and things just, we thought this is the perfect boat for us. And then all of a sudden everything went wrong. And we said, I don't understand this. We thought this was the perfect boat. So we just go into a mode where you flow, don't make any big decisions, don't make any big changes and just watch how things play out. So another time, I had said to my assistant, Bev, I want to do an event in San Diego. Let's find a venue to do, for me to do an event. We just couldn't find anything. She said, Suzanne, I keep hitting a wall. And we both went, whoa, we're not supposed to do that event. The very next day, my mother called and said, I'm having surgery back in Florida. And it was the exact dates of when I thought I was going to do the thing in San Diego. Spirit knew that, had the bigger picture. Your guides knew it. They weren't letting us book something that we would then have to cancel. So it just becomes a matter of you get to the point where you trust. 
I'm hitting a wall. I'm trying to do things my way. I'm going to just flow. Show me. Remember that phrase. Show me. Make it very clear what my next step is. And they may not say it, but you will have a thought. If you act on that, just feeling into is my gut clenching or does this feel open? And you act on the open guidance, mm -hmm. then things start falling into place and you say, yeah. got it. Thank you. That has, yeah, that has happened in the past. Sure. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. You're Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you, Rosemary. Well, we'll move on to our next question with Sharissa. I'm going to ask you to unmute. Welcome to the stage and go ahead and ask Suzanne or if you have a figure out how to turn it up. I okay. can hear you, so go ahead. Okay. Just go ahead and speak. I just want to say thank you. First of all, I love your classes. I've been taking them on the Shift Network, Suzanne. And um, I've um, had a lot of experience with doing readings in the past. It was just kind of um, fell into it. But your your validation of what I've been doing has been amazing to me, <laughs> given me confidence. I want to continue with this. I stopped after my son passed. But anyway, I have a question. Um, he shows up all the time since your classes, it's good parent and it's just really a lot of fun. Um, but I have a deaf developmentally handicapped sister. She's got cerebral palsy. And we recently put her in a facility where she has her own apartment, but they care for her. And she wasn't, they said she wouldn't live past 65 because of her condition, cerebral palsy and everything. Well, she's now 68. Mm -hmm. um, I'm preparing to go see her um, September 15th with my niece um, in Portland. And um, I had a dream that was so vivid the other night. And it was, she's very, very overweight. Um, she's in a wheelchair. And the dream was that she passed in her sleep and it had something to do with her heart. And I didn't wake up frightened or anything. She's got dementia. It's getting worse. I'm not sure how, you know, how when someone's close to you, you just don't know. I, I've had premonitions before and told people on a trip, look out for the gray van. They call me and said on their way to Reno, if we hadn't, have, I just switched driving. If I hadn't have been aware, I would have been wiped out. And, you know, said it, things like that. And so I feel like it's a premonition, but how would you interpret that? I am always very cautious with dreams because many times they are the manipulation of subconscious thoughts and feelings in our own energy field because you've had a past experience with that, it could very well be true. So what I would advise is honor that by making sure you've said everything you want to to your sister. I would absolutely not say anything to her about it because it never helps anybody to hear you might die because we all might die tomorrow and it doesn't help. So simply just say, okay, well, perhaps spirit is preparing me or not in any case. Have I taken care of all unfinished business and just be as loving as you can? And that's it. Yeah, thank you. I, I would never say anything like, you know, we don't try to say anything to upset her. And her last birthday, yeah. she said, I turned 30. I turned 30 today huh. and she's 68. So anyway, I thank you for that. I just was wanting some guidance around. If and and just remember that death is, death is, death may be sad for us, but it's not a tragedy for the person at all, for the soul. It's just a new chapter. and we're all welcome back. So when we start to see with a different perspective, it helps everybody. Thank you very much. I appreciate you both okay. and everyone it, for holding this space. Take care. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you, Sharissa. I think we'll have time for one more question. So I'm going to mute you and Jeffrey and Zanya, I'm going to ask you to unmute. Welcome. Go ahead. My question basically has to do with dowsing and, you know, using, I use dowsing in some areas, you know, just trying to help determine some what's good for my body, but can it be used to kind of determine, uh, can you use dowsing to help realize if you're on a connection or, or is that message coming from spirit or guide? Can dowsing is, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, can be using a pendulum or can be using rods that point inward or outward or go move you towards things. There are many ways to douse. 
Dowsing can be used for any kind of insights that are especially good for questions that can be answered with yes or no. But dowsing is a tool when those answers are already coming through your field. So any insights you could gain just simply by asking spirit, your body is a dousing instrument. How does that answer feel? Do you feel open and expansive? Or yes, you feel constricted and tight for a no. Uh, it's, it's beautiful when we can use tools and they're fun and they're interesting and can be helpful, but know that the tools are responding to your own energy field. Okay. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. I, kind of got that i just didn't know if sometimes it would be helpful for people who are having difficulty sorting that out you know well it's a good training wheel how's that there you go <laughs> thank you suzanne you're welcome thank you jeffrey and sonia well we have reached the top of the hour so i so appreciate you all for joining us today did you have any final messages suzanne well, yeah i just wanted to share with everybody my good news that i have written a new book somebody you were, were talking about liking my books i have two books coming out next year and one of them is going to be all of the tools and the teaching about our oneness it's going to be called so very loved with perfect title and published by Hay House. So I'm really thrilled to have a Hay House contract. And another one is going to be a part of a series of books called Common Sentience. This title will be Mediumship, and that'll be out later in the year. So again, if you're on my email list, you'll know when those books are available, but it's just such a blessing to be able to continue to bring the community together with good information. So I love that you all took the course and are taking the course and seem to be enjoying and getting a lot out of it. And the, the most important part is that we all can make these connections with spirit. The connections are always right here. It's just a matter of shifting our focus. Thank you so much. And I would highly encourage everyone to go to Suzanne's website to stay on her email list and get updated on her books and events. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Have, Have a blessed day. day. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.